Hello, everybody, and welcome to HardAssetsInvestor.com. I'm Mike Norman, your host here at the CME Group in New York City. And my guest today is Sal Gilberti, who is the CEO of Tucrium Trading, LLC. Sal, good to see you again. Good to see you as well, Mike. Now, I'm really excited to have you here because I want to talk about the grain markets. It's been a while since we discussed grains, and in particular, there's talk this year of a huge potential El Nino that's potentially an enormous weather destabilizing uh, effect and it could have a huge impact on the grain markets. How do you see this playing out if in fact we do get hit with the El Nino? Well, we, we could have an El Nino this year. We haven't had one, I believe, since, nine, since 2009. Um, and that, of course, you know, we saw grain markets, particularly corn and soybeans in the U.S., affected by drought. Normally, though, an El Nino, um, as I understand it, is you, you get dry spells uh, in drought. Asia, drought basically, in Asia and Africa, and you get rains in South America. El Nino typically um, creates wintertime disturbances in the U.S., but we did in the 2009 event have, uh, you know, recurring current drought in the U.S. 2009-2010. Um, I think what, what I've read is that overall the big grains of rice, soybeans, wheat, and corn, they are most affected. Interestingly, soybean generally globally has increased production, I think because of the rain in South America, and uh, you have less production of corn, wheat, and rice. So it does affect prices pretty significantly around the globe. Now, corn and, and all the ag prices have really come down quite a bit from the peaks uh, of a few years ago. Uh, are you surprised at current levels? And also, I want to ask you, because this is directly tied in with what you do, investor interest. Like we know several years ago, there was uh, a very high level of investor interest in the ags. You're kind of on the front lines of that with your funds. How do you see that? Well, we see increased investor interest. Mostly, it's interesting, lower prices bring increased investor interest. Uh, our products are only three and a half years old. Corn Fund is our, our oldest fund at three and a half years. And so what that does is allow investors for the first time to participate in the big grains, uh, right. including sugar as well, sugar, wheat, soybeans, and corn, in an ETF that's easily tradable, exchange-traded product that's easily tradable. So investor interest in the drought last time, um, I think, was initiated for ordinary people who who don't trade futures. And now with the price coming down, people realizing that an allocation to ags is uh, a stabilizing factor in their portfolio and a well-rounded portfolio. So we see much more interest as the price comes down. People tend to cycle it into their portfolio. Right. And that that, that is a, a theme that we see uh, throughout the commodity space, the, uh, the asset allocation, the diversification aspect. Um, let's go down the list now. You mentioned higher production in soybeans. Um, uh, let's look at corn, wheat, and sugar. Sure. Um, corn is set to have another uh, bumper crop this year, but we're just getting the seeds in the ground now. They're literally not all planted. So, the, in essence, uh, speculators are out there betting on the price of corn that isn't yet planted. Prices have come down because the weather's good. You rarely have multiple uh, drought, you know, year after year after year. We had a, a huge crop last year. We should have another good crop this year, but it's too early to tell. You've got planting, you've got pollination, um, and, and then, of course, harvest. So there's a lot of uncertainty that goes with grains. Soybeans, you um, seem to have a good amount. The balance sheet needed replenishing. Hopefully it will be this year. Those are the projections. Wheat, we're having a tough time here in the U.S. You've got Texas and Kansas. Uh, their winter wheat crops are devastated by drought. There isn't really uh, a whole lot predicted that's going to help that. That said, the, the global balance sheet on wheat is, is pretty good. It's stable though. It's stable. Really, El Nino bringing drought to Australia could have a severe impact on wheat prices, but time will tell. What about, I'm interested in the uh, Ukraine situation. Now, Ukraine is historically, it's a, it's a wheat producing region. Has that um, turmoil over there has that factored in at all at all to wheat prices? Could it have an effect? if that flares up again. Definitely. The Black Sea is a huge source of wheat and, and uh, grain protein for the world. If the Ukraine, who's a major exporter, one of the largest exporters on the globe, has um, political instability to the point where it affects crops and exports, that could have a damaging effect on wheat and of course prices would go higher. Now, um, what about we see um, stock prices, equity prices, the economy coming back you're saying that people are making bets on new crop right now. 
Are, are those long bets? Are they betting on higher prices? Uh, it's pretty balanced. I mean, it buyers is. and sellers are, are, are all out there. You've seen prices come down, so I think overall most people believe there will be a healthy crop. We tend to stabilize under um, the prices about where they are now um, because people do have this El Nino uncertainty and, of course, the planting uncertainty in their minds. If we have the northern corn belt unable to plant because of too much wetness, then which is ironic, which drought is what drove us higher a couple of years ago, um, that would... that. Some of that land might shift to soybeans, so you could have soybeans feeling some more pressure. You could have corn feeling some strength. It depends on what happens. Now, what about sugar? I know you and I talked about sugar uh, the last time. I, I uh, haven't really followed the price recently. What's your outlook on sugar? Sugar looks like it's bottomed on the charts. You do have the uh, global sugar production balance sheet kind of evening out. You've had four good years of surplus sugar, more sugar produced than used. Um, that tends to be balancing right now. El Nino is interesting. You, you really need dry weather for sugar harvest, and you need you know appropriate dampness and wetness and precipitation for the planting. So you've got uh, Brazil as the major sugar producer, and then India right behind, and they each need wetness and dryness at the right time. El Nino can affect India because of dryness, and it can affect uh, Brazil because of wetness, but ten Brazil tends to get enough rain during an El Nino where their soybean production is, is adequate. Now, uh, let's, talk, let's talk a little bit about the, the ethanol effect. I know that it has uh, very much an influence both on sugar and on corn. We use uh, corn-based ethanol here in the United States. I know in Brazil, another big uh, ethanol producer, they use sugar, I believe, correct? Um, that trend, that's a long-term bullish trend, isn't it? That's a very long-term, very bullish trend for sugar. Interestingly, ethanol prices are actually below well, sugar. Well, for corn, it, it stabilized corn, but the increase in production in corn rose to meet ethanol. So if anything, oh. it really, I believe, didn't affect prices too much. Remember that corn, when you extract the starch to get the sugar to get the ethanol, what's still left is uh, starch and, and uh, sorry, protein and fiber, which is good animal feed. So it actually increased the supply of animal feed, which is corn's number one use globally. Now, with your funds specifically, talk a little bit about the roll effect. Uh, I think, uh, aren't they set up in a way or structured in a way where you do not have that, uh, that roll effect? That's correct. It's mitigated. We, unlike many other funds out there, do not hold front month. We do not concentrate our positions in one month. So we are out the curve. Very often we have multiple crop years held in our portfolios for the corn fund, the wheat fund, the soybean fund, and the sugar fund. And so that mitigates the effect of having to roll and affecting the markets and, and maybe some inefficiencies in, in when you have to roll out of those futures. So why give the symbols. I know corn, obviously, is C-O-R-N. Correct. Wheat is W-E-A-T, wheat without the H. Right. Soybean is S-O-Y-B. And uh, sugar is cane, C-A-N-E. Those are all uh, New York Stock Exchange ticker symbols. All right. Two Korean funds, two Korean trading, LLC. Sal, it's always great having you here. Thanks very much. That's it for now, folks. This is Mike Norman saying see you next time. Bye-bye.